Third on the grid, the Scott Neil Mackenzie on bike number five. That's a Honda, and they say it's from England, but Mackenzie would uh, debate that in he'll tell you Scotland, Scotland the Brave. Multiple time world champion is the second quickest qualifier, wearing the number three on the back of his Yamaha based here in the United States, Eddie Lawson. And on the grid, bike 17. Of him, number five. I think that's McKenzie trying to make a move and take away the lead. McKenzie and Brady running one two as they're on that manufactured portion of the course. Look at this tight shot group. Click those pictures. Boy, they don't get any closer together than this. Number five, McKenzie in front of it as they make the turn underneath us here and accelerate between the two legs. Boy, there's some brave moves. We got one off. We got one off big time and a wheel or something. Gas tank separating from the motorcycle. The rider is up and okay. Is okay. Gene Brown. It is 57. Gene Brown, the guy we were just talking about, the Hall Privateer making the field. Back to the leaders. McKenzie, number five in front. Number one, Wayne Gardner in second. Number 17 is third, and 34 Schwanz in a Schwanz in a fourth place spot. So Rainey third, Schwanz in fourth. First two Americans. They're past me up at the top of the hill. They're already on the way to the course crew. Larry, here they come. First time into the top of the course crew. It's McKenzie. It's number one. in front of it on the brakes hard right now is the number five motorcycle which I think is also tuned by Herb Kakamoto which have just put together the winning effort in the last race and off the corner they come headed right to the Nissan Bridge this will be the completion of lot number one number five McKenzie in front of number one Gardner in second number 34 Schwartz in third number 17 Brady in fourth number four Haslam on the hill rounds out the top five through that manufacturing section
three. Steady Eddie Lawson in a fifth place spot. If you're running sixth, you're starting to lose touch. If you're in sixth place, you're starting to lose touch in that opening freight train of guys who are cooking right now. Watch the battle back at third, fourth, and fifth as Schwantz, Rainey, and Lawson, three of the fastest Americans, are tied together. Now, will they use each other or not? That's going to be an interesting question. Will they just coast for a little while? Remember, 140 kilometers is a ways to go. But we'll speculate on that later. Meanwhile, let's stay right on top of the leaders. The 26-year-old Scott Neil McKenzie gets hard on the throttle and rockets that bike up to the top of the hill here in turn six. Tips it over the left-hand side, gets off it for half a second, then just disappears as he goes up the hillside. But look at Eddie Lawson. He is just ready. Eddie Lawson wants this one. Starts to get a little bit. 
and farther and farther away from Wayne Gardner. These riders are really drifting it far out to the outside. And you should see Wayne Rainey take a quick look over the shoulder and guess who gives a wave? And he lost it. A scary wiggle as, whoa, McKenzie bouncing off the curve on the inside of the top of the corkscrew with a scary wiggle as he came into it. Really on the power, pushing that machine absolutely to the end, to the nth degree of adhesion on this racetrack. And I would have to think as they come down into 10, Bruce, that Gardner's going to be a little bit close for that bobble by McKenzie. It's a little early to be having rain today if you want to beat the world champion at the strike right now. Winning lap number seven, McKenzie still in front. Second place is number one, Gardner. Third place is 17, Brady. And fourth place is number three, Lawson. Boy, they are flat going. Interval 1.3.
Chauncey back as they come down the hill. Rainey back on the gas, although it looked as though Rainey's been working it awful hard. Schwantz has now moved into the fourth place spot. Set him for you off the corner one more time. This time we will be completing a total of 10 laps and be fully a quarter of the way through. McKenzie, number five in front. Carter, number one in second. Lawson, number three in third. 34 Schwantz in fourth. 17 in that fifth place spot is Rainey. And then you have an interval of a day and a half back to the sixth place spot. Although the Japanese rider, that's a sure one. Number seven in the district at number nine has moved up to the seventh place spot. He's been passing more people on the racetrack than any other single individual. Rainey, just a couple of bike lengths behind Schwantz as they're on the manufactured portion of the racetrack, the newest part of the track. And Rainey would like to get back with him. The very worst thing that could happen would be that Rainey would lose touch with this very fast freight train of riders who leads him now. The top three bikes coming up that 1,000 foot drag strip up here to the top of turn six. McKenzie on the HB International sponsored bike number five. It's a cigarette race out in front as it's HB and then Rothmans and then the Marlboro machine is steady Eddie on the way to the corkscrew. And boy, they are smoking them. It's the HB Suzuki of McKenzie and then the Rothman Honda uh, and then the Marlboro steady Eddie and Schwantz bringing up the rear with a nice cool steady glass of Pepsi Cola. What a fantastic racer. Use an ordinary conditioner with your dandruff shampoo, and some of your dandruff protection could be rinsed right down the drain. New Head & Shoulders Conditioner works with your shampoo to give you more dandruff protection where you need it, not where you don't, while leaving your hair easy to comb, easy to manage. New Head & Shoulders Conditioner works with your shampoo, not against it. I've got a gum that's really spearmint gum For me it's the Jew, it's my number one It's so minty cool, minty through and through it It tastes so great, you'll just love to chew it Wrigley spearmint, Wrigley spearmint gum Cool fresh taste, share it with someone It's so minty cool, minty through and through it Tastes so great, you'll just love to chew it Tastes so great, you'll just love to chew it There are drivers and riders on the road today, good, careful drivers who've never had an accident, but who are driving with defective vision. Drivers who take care of their cars and bikes, check everything carefully and regularly, everything, that is, except their eyesight. You might not have noticed over the years that your eyesight is not quite what it used to be, but you could be in danger if you can't read the signs early enough. So, get your sight checked before it's too late. to another really good race that's at turn 11 right now. This is the battle for seventh place overall at turn 11, and they're having their own private war. Leaders should be over in front of Ralph. I'll tell you about that battle you were just talking about. Sunzi Yachishiro out in front. DDA DeRadigas has gotten past Ron Haslam, so that one has changed. Also, Mike Baldwin and Rob McLennan are going at it, and it looks like we got somebody pulling off. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's Wayne Gardner. No, here comes Gardner, but somebody went way high. Our leaders stay the same. It's the 42 bike. John that John, Long. John Long is just letting all the fast guys go by. McKenzie at the top of the corkscrew now. Lawson closing it in, closing the gap. Lawson looked very, very smooth now through the corkscrew. Gardner in third place. Number Still. nine, the rider is down. Number nine, the rider, Yatsushiro. That's Shunji Yatsushiro, the one we just had you watching intently. He was the, uh, one of the quickest guys on the racetrack in a battle for seven. But Yatsushiro, uh, physically, apparently okay. Maybe he can get it restarted. We'll find out. But focus. Oh, I got Ron Assam off course up here at the top of the hill. Oh, man, you want to talk about some smooth dirt track riding. That boy took that Elf Honda. Oh, he, he should talk about running the mile next week. All right, so apparently he is OK and continued on, right? Correct. He is on his way to the corkscrew. He's on the top of the corkscrew looking smooth. You'd never know the motorcycle was out in the dirt at all. OK, let me update you now. Six tenths of a second, Eddie Lawson was back. Lawson is challenging him. Lawson is on his exhaust pipe. He smells the silencer as they go over the lake area right now. Eddie Lawson coming after the Scotsman, McKenzie. Oh, and 
steady Eddie Lawson tucks in, becomes part of the paint job on the motorcycle, gaining that extra momentum as they get to the corner. And Ralph Shaheen, they're onto the old asphalt. You got a battle coming at you for the lead. Here they come, the crowd leans over the fences, and oh my, Neil McKenzie, I would not want to be in your shoes, because steady Eddie is gunning you down, man. He is coming after him and hot. On the way to the corkscrew as the crowd cheers him on. Got hero back by me, got hero on the racetrack, and a very small margin now between the number five McKenzie, number three Lawson at the top of the corkscrew. Lawson all over McKenzie, and Gardner now playing catch up. Schwantz, and then Rainey. But uh, you know that Lawson wants that position, and desperately he's going to set up. Where is he going to set up McKenzie Prep? Oh, they just went by Yatsushiro, and they sucked the goggles off of the poor Japanese rider who went down, as they did on the brakes in turn 11. Look at this mono a mono battle coming up the straightaway to the Nissan Bridge. This will be the completion of lap number 17, and it's McKenzie by one and one quarter bike lengths. That's all. But this is Lawson's corner. This is where Lawson likes to close in on him. Right onto the new asphalt. Lawson's on him. I mean, he's underneath him. He's making the challenge now. He made it work. Lawson's in front. It's steady Eddie. Talk to him a little bit. Talk to him. Oh, the crowd, almost 100,000 strong behind the American rider. And they're seeing a display by both of these guys, John, that's fantastic. Incredible. Extraordinary control. And they have to concentrate for every single second. They're right at the limit. McKenzie, the Scotsman, now in second. Lawson, the American, in the lead. And Ralph Shaheen, they're coming at you once again. Eddie Lawson currently tied with Barry Sheen with 19 victories. He wants number 20, and he wants it on his home track. And that crowd cheers him on. I'm sure you can hear it through my mind. They go crazy. Eddie Lawson on his way to the corkscrew again. And it's Eddie Lawson at the top of the corkscrew leading McKenzie. Let's hear it over here in the corkscrew for Eddie Francesco Chile went down. Here Francesco Chile is okay and has now retired behind the pit lane wall. Where's your battle for the lead? You ready for it? Coming up the main straightaway. Going through the gearbox. The fastest speed on the racetrack is right underneath the media building. And it's Lawson now by four or five bike lengths over the Scotsman, McKenzie. How many laps are down? According to my chart, 18 laps have been completed. They're working lap 19. There is a half a second differential. And it's the Stars and Stripes in front moment but hey we'd like to welcome all of you international people with your satellite dishes that are pointed at this race we'd like to tell you no matter where you are in antarctica that it's in the mid 80s here at laguna seca and it's been skin to win in the grandstands and a beautiful weekend boy the motorcycle people are loving this whole day and in the meantime rainey has taken over from schwantz in fourth spot okay wayne rainey is up to fourth taking over from schwantz and rainey who looked earlier like he might have been on a ragged edge is starting to go just a little bit quicker started to push in turn six, and it's getting bumpy. Rainey and Schwartz go through it. It is knocking some of these riders around a little bit. Rainey takes a peek over his shoulder and sees a Petley sign coming after him. Lawson steady as glass and smooth as glass as they go down through the course. He was stretching out a little bit over McKenzie. And then Gardner, Rainey with about four bikes between he and Schwartz as they go down through the course. Route. Looks like Lawson's starting to put just a little bit between he and the second place McKen uh, McKenna now. Is what we're working when the leaders cross the stripe. We're one lap away from halfway. One lap away from halfway, and here comes Steady Eddie. Front wheel claws up a little bit at the sky, but Lawson keeps it down. Gotta keep that motorcycle working efficiently, and he is doing that. He's a mantle of efficiency right now as Lawson on the number three Yamaha has pulled out 1.4 seconds. He's out to 1.4. He picked up all a second on that very last lap. Lawson familiar with parts of this racetrack. Lawson wanted a world championship around here. And the Yamaha, boy, the Yamaha guys are over there, their fingers are crossed. It's a good time to tell you once again that without the help of both uh, Yamaha and Honda, this event would never have become a reality. First time in nearly a quarter of a century that we have seen world championship racing. And Ralph Shaheed, you're seeing an eyeful of it right now. Go, go. 
number 17, the rider going off and on the race course. Number 17 is Wayne Reedy. He's having a little bit of handling problems, maybe. Underneath us just went by Neil McKenzie, the Scotsman. Out into the very smooth section is Lawson, and we are halfway. We are halfway done. 2.1 seconds differential between first and second at the halfway point. And for those of you keeping lap charts, show Lawson the American at the lead as the cross flags, which would normally be shown if it was an AMA race, they'd be out there with a halfway sign. But instead, for FIM regulations, there is a lap board that the riders can see every time they come by. They know exactly how many laps are left in the event at any point in the event itself. The U.S. Grand Prix shaping up exactly as we had hoped. Some of the best road racing ever as far as Grand Prix competition was concerned. And Eddie Lawson has made a ride of a lifetime as he has put himself right where he had always dreamed to be and leading the U.S. Grand Prix. Wayne Gardner working himself through slower traffic. Here comes Rainey and Schwantz right on Rainey's tail. All the way up the hill, Rainey takes a quick peek under the arm as they go up the hill. And it's a Pepsi 34 chasing him down. The crowd coming alive at the top of the corks. Whoa, Gardner going around a slower rider. It's, the crowd comes alive for Lawson as he came down through the corkscrew. The American fans love it, seeing the American out in front of the first GP in the United States in 25 years. They're showing us on TV that the average speed so far has been 86 and uh, 3 point, 86.37 miles an hour up to the halfway point. Uh, when you stop to consider that some of the qualifying efforts were only in the 88 mile an hour region, they're running the race at a rather torrid pace. Now, we're beyond the halfway point. Eddie Lawson in front of it. Then uh, Wayne Gardner is, is in third. I'll get it all right. Let me look over here on the chart. Number three, Lawson in front. Number five, McKenzie in second. Number one, Gardner in third. Number 17, Rainey in the fourth place spot. Number 34, Schwantz is in the fifth place spot. So we've got a U.S. citizen, a Scotsman, an Aussie, and another pair of Yanks in the top five. Picking him up out on the smooth section of the race course and looking for Eddie Lawson. And he now makes the transition to the 20-some-odd-year-old asphalt and climbs the hill. It is a much steeper climb now as Eddie Lawson is not used to this. It has, since they have redone this course, become a steeper climb. It is a 1,000-foot race from turn five to turn six. And Lawson does it smooth as ever. Here comes Wayne Rainey and Schwantz. And again, Rainey looks over his shoulder. And this time, Schwantz is a little bit farther back. Whoa, number five, McKenzie, off over the tops of the stripe, onto the asphalt, back down onto the racetrack at the top of the cork crew. He didn't lose much, but he did get off the racetrack a little bit. And that's not going to help him in his pursuit for that. Uh, Eddie Lawson, as Lawson goes down into turn 10. We pick him up there, but let's back up for just a second and give you a rundown, an unofficial rundown at the halfway point. We've got clocks going. I'll try this. At 20 laps, it was number three, Lawson in front. Uh, number five in the second place spot was McKenzie. Number one, Gardner third, 17, Rainey fourth, 34, Schwantz fifth. Number seven in the sixth place spot is the freshman, Christian Salon. In the sixth place spot, it is number 12, Didier de Radiguez from Belgium. In the eighth place spot, it is number four, that is Ron Haslam from Great Britain. In the ninth place spot, it is number 10, and 10 is Rob Mc... Give me that one. Rob McElmay, I've got it and can't do it. And in the 10th spot, it is number 18. Who's 18 would be Mike Baldwin. Oh, who kept trying to decide what number he was going to wear this weekend. We predicted earlier on that the bikes would speed up as that fuel load went down. Lawson is running lap times in a minute 30. A minute and 30 lap time, which we were considering as the possibility of a track record at this facility. And I'm going to guess uh, that we skip Ralph this time. Go to the top of the hill. Larry Coleman, you should have the leaders. At the top of the hill. It's Steady Eddie Lawson, number three, Marlboro Yamaha. Smooth as silk down through the corkscrew. The fans love it. McKenzie's on the gas. McKenzie pulling out the stops, doing everything he can. Gardner, again, back in third place as uh, Rainey and Schwantz go by me at the top of the hill. The, the field now starting to stretch out a little bit. It's incredible. Over well, halfway through this race, and these guys are going faster. They're supposed to be getting tired, but they don't know the word tired. A couple of logos uh, looking at the leader once again. Uh, Marlboro, one of our major event sponsors. Yamaha, one of our major event sponsors. They're both on the side of Eddie Lawson as he comes by us here. This is the gap between first and second. Approximately 3.8 seconds at this time. All right, so the differential out to about 3.8 as Lawson plays that Yamaha like with some kind of a musical instrument right now and just gasses it. I mean, it's unbelievable the feeling of excitement.
acceleration that he must be exhilarating to this rider as he comes on that throttle. The rest of us would probably pale in comparison trying to ride the same piece of equipment. Lawson does it like a surgeon, man. Here he is, smooth, little wiggle there as he made the move out onto the older asphalt once again. And Ralph Shaheen, you're looking down the gun sights of one of America's fastest. One of the world's fastest is the big number three on that Yarbrough Marlboro machine. Works itself through turn six. The centrifugal and centripetal forces at work on those tires as Neil McKenzie hangs on for the ride of his life as he charges up through the hill. It is amazing as these guys get on the gas how loose these bikes get behind him. You can see him just squiggling and squirming all over and those riders just hanging on for dear life. Boston and McKenzie by me. McKenzie all over that motorcycle. Gardner not quite hanging off the motorcycle quite as far as the riders in front of him. Rainey by me. Schwantz by me. Not much difference there between those two riders. Six, eight bike lengths between Rainey and Schwantz. Larry Coleman, who's the announcer up on our uh, course crew area. Larry, a former national champion in sidecars and international racer of motorcycles. As I look out there, Larry, Gardner's motorcycle and McKenzie's motorcycle, neither one of them seem to be handling well. They, would it be suspension tires, or can you tell from your position? I would say it's more suspension than tires. As they go down here, go down through the bumpy section, uh, out of the corkscrew, turn 8A and into 9. Um, I, they were having difficulty during the week, the international riders were sorting the suspension. I'm going to have to go with suspension. I think tires are probably OK. All right, we're beyond that halfway point, working lap number 25 out of 40. 25 laps is the one we're working. Watching our leader, number three, Eddie Lawson, who's a tall guy for an international motorcycle rider. He's pretty big. Yes, you're supposed to be practically midget-sized, and it does make a difference. They say that each seven pounds is worth one horsepower. All right. Well, Lawson has to give away a horsepower or two to some of the more jockey-weighted type of people. The international TV watching the Aussie, Gardner, the one who's had the Rothmans Honda that's been kind of wiggling around uh, a bit extra, it seems to us. Although... He just keeps on the gas. Anybody who could be running third in a field like this, it must not be all bad the way it's doing. Lawson and McKenzie by me. Gardner now in front of me. Uh, a little bump as he can hit the bumps coming down out of 8-8. Uh, Rainey getting a couple of bike links on Schwartz on that last lap. So the Yamaha uh, Rainey pulling away from the Suzuki just a little bit. Picking up our leaders as we look around. We will be completing 25 laps when Lawson crosses the strike right now. And Lawson. Working lap 26, and uh, still McKenzie, the differential of approximately four seconds now. Lawson's pulling it out. Four seconds back, and then personally another three to four seconds back to Wayne Gardner, the third place overall rider. Wayne Rainey is in fourth, and if anybody is closing in of that fast five, Rainey is actually reeling in Wayne Gardner, but he's got a ways to go before he's going to make his presence felt. Leaders should be on their way to Ralph Shaheen. number three and I'll tell you who is really riding the wildest through this turn six area is Wayne Rainey and Kevin Schwanz majority of the riders such as Wayne Gardner in here right now hanging out and then get up halfway oh Gardner real loose as he comes through here Gardner is not having a good day he is not enjoying this at all but Schwanz he just takes off that and off that seat all the way up to the top of the hill right McKenzie and uh, Lawson and McKenzie by me place position. Uh, hey, Rainey's not doing too shabby. This is his first full season of Grand Prix racing with Team Roberts. And uh, look where he's laying in this in his second ever GP in a regular season. Got to hand it to Rainey doing a super job out there. Each Tissot rock watch is carved from granite. Each is as individual as your signature. The Tissot rock watch. You fancy a few lagers, right? <clears throat> but nothing to attract the law. Hello, hello. So what do you do? You ask for the Klausthaler, isn't it? Klausthaler is brewed in Germany like a proper lager should be. But Klausthaler has got so little alcohol, it cannot put you over the limit. If you like lager a lot, you can now drink a lot of lager. Klaus Thaler is good, yeah? Low in alcohol. 
big on taste. Nobody likes to think about dying, but I never forget, never, that it was somebody that died, that had signed a donor card that enabled me to live a full life and to have Adam. <laughs> He's just a continuation of my transplant, you know. Oh, careful. Oh, it's not in it. I feel sort of deep, oh, what's the word, gratitude. If that person hadn't signed a donor card, then I don't think I'd be here, and definitely he wouldn't. If you'd like to give new life to someone after your death, carry the card. About 10 laps remaining. In fact, now less than 10 laps remaining. Let's go up to Ralph and see where the leaders are. Your leader is just going by one of these lower bikes, the 27 machine, as he works himself. He just went past Alessandro Valesi, goes down a lap. As Neil McKenzie comes into the fifth braking marker, gets on the brakes, dips it over the left hand side, and goes up the hill. Rainey, I got him at 131.59. That would put him at about 86.472 miles an hour for the 2.2 lap. Lawson absolutely flawless through here. McKenzie down through the corkscrew, and Baldwin, a left rider now. Gardner working that motorcycle. You got to say he is definitely earning his pay. Nasty wiggles as he comes down out of turn 8A into 9. Now you know, it's kind of a shame as I sit here and think about the pomp and circumstance and the international of this, internationalness of this event. The only music you're going to hear other than Ike and Tina Turner is going to be the United States National Anthem this weekend. We had the anthems from Venezuela, we had the anthems from England, we had the anthems from everywhere. But the only anthem that plays is that of the victor or the winner. The differential? Nine seconds at this time, the leader Lawson over the second place McKenzie. Nine full seconds in hand, beyond the three-quarter point in the event. The only question left is, will the motorcycle hold up and will there still be tires when Eddie Lawson gets to the end of this event? McKenzie on the smooth portion of the racetrack. In fact, the International Satellite TV is watching McKenzie to see how his motorcycle is working. Well, on the smooth portion of the racetrack, it looks picture perfect. You get him out to the other part of the racetrack, oh, in fact, a little wiggle right there. As they lean him over, the guys from the tire companies were telling me, in fact, Nate Jones from Michelin Tire says as they roll over in the motorcycle and get it into a lean angle, they've actually got more of a footprint on the racetrack. It can apply more horsepower, either to brake them or to accelerate them. Up the hill they come, Ralph. The leader is already by me. I'm just looking for the differential between third and fourth, and it's 2.68 between Gardner and Rainey, and Schwanz is way back. Lawson way by me, McKenzie now. Flick to the left, flick to the right, down through the corkscrew. Gardner is still hanging in there with that nasty wiggle coming down out of 8A, but stretching it out, uh, and even, it does look like he is stretching it out over Wayne Rainey, uh, perhaps even getting, gaining a few bike lengths over Rainey. Yourself. We just watched Wayne Gardner lock the front wheel through the little whoop de doo section there. Is that the safest way through? Get it on the just the drive wheel? No, it certainly is. You want to keep both wheels on the ground with one of these at all times. Gardner's pulling out the stops. He's right. is trying anything he can to get that motorcycle around the racetrack and, uh, and gain positions in doing it. Okay, John. We've said it before, it bears repeating. These gentlemen are operating unicycles on acceleration. Their front wheel has so little weight on it that it's almost irrelevant. And you're going to see air between the rear tire and the tarmac as they slow down, especially for turn 11. These are unicycles under the control of very sensitive right wrists. Fastest motorcycles in the world, Ralph. And I got a feeling number Whoa. three is coming at you. D. Randy Gay had getting really out of shape coming into the top of the corkscrew. Really out of shape and Haslam by him on the inside. D. Randy Gay getting under control and getting down and through and out into turn 10. What a radical move coming into the top. The front wheel, the rear wheel, off at the ground and hopping radically. There, you might as well keep it. Your leaders are in your area, buddy. They just went by me, didn't they? They certainly did. And uh, here's McKenzie now at the top of the corkscrew. Gardner is Gardner gaining a little bit on McKenzie. Bruce, take a look at this as they come down across the stripe. It looks to me like Gardner is gaining on McKenzie and uh, pulling away from Wayne Rainey. Hey, no doubt about it. The Aussie chasing down the Scotsman right now in the battle for second place. Wayne Gardner is visibly closing on Neil McKenzie. 
Still, Eddie Lawson in front of it. In fact, Lawson at the stripe. Into the books goes lap number 33 out of 40. 33 laps down, and your battle's shaping for second. And indeed, in addition to that battle, there's a wonderful battle going on between the Belgian Didier Draguier, Draguier, and the Brit Ron Haslam on that interesting Elf Honda. They swapped places a little while ago for seventh position, and they're still doing battle. The International World Championship here at Laguna for the first time ever. First time we've seen this quality level of competition in the United States. And now the battle's for second. If you're an Aussie, you're rooting for Gardner, number one. If you're a Brit or a Scotsman, you'll be rooting for the guy that is in second, Neil McKenzie. There is about four bike lengths separating the two of them. And gentlemen, we'll focus on this race for a lap or so. Somehow I got the feeling Wayne Gardner wants by. And Ralph, they're about ready to gas it in your direction. Here they come, up underneath the Nissan Bridge. They got, oh, we got Gardner taking a look to the inside. He sees nothing but a yellow machine with a five on it, but they are nose and tail as they go up to the top of the hill. Leader by me, smooth as silk, steady Eddie. I'm looking at the top of the hill, and I'm seeing a number five. Inside move by Gardner. Whoa! McKenzie leading Gardner into the top. Gardner taking it at the top, so it is still Gardner in second place. What an incredible race for McKenzie. McKenzie now backing away about three or four bike lanes. Now is Gardner just been dialed up on the hero run or what? Wayne Gardner has taken over second. Can he run down Eddie Lawson or is Neil McKenzie just riding a wounded machine now? The leader, Lawson, is going to be completing lap number 34, has completed lap number 34. At the strike right now is Wayne Gardner, your second place rider, and number five, McKenzie, your third place rider. And we have an 11 second gap to see if uh, Gardner can make up 11 seconds on Lawson in the few remaining laps. Well, that sounds like a tough assignment. 11 seconds, you've got to steal away from Eddie Lawson. He can do it, though. There are about six laps remaining in this show. We'll have to see. We'll go back and find where the leader is now. He's coming up to my front doorstep. Take a look down the straightaway. Here it comes. Eddie Lawson out of the turn five area on his way up here to turn six. That battle for second place, as we said, between McKenzie and Gardner. Gardner out in front now in second place. I have to think from where I've been watching that it's not necessarily that Neil McKenzie is getting slower. It's just that Wayne Gardner is that exceptional of a rider. He has been battling probably the worst handling bike on the course as far as the top five are concerned. And he is doing a masterful job and is well earned at number one. Lawson by me now. Gardner at the top of the corkscrew with probably six, eight bike legs over McKenzie. McKenzie's going to try and reel him in again. He did reel him in before. Was Gardner having a problem? Was McKenzie finding some uh, extra horsepower somewhere on the racetrack? But now it's uh, Gardner starting to stretch it out again over McKenzie. Picking up. Eddie Lawson in my gun sights. International TV is certainly focused on Wayne Gardner. Lawson by us here in the media building and has completed lap 35. There are now five laps left to go. Five laps left to go. Remember the differential was out around 11 seconds last time. Let's see what it is now. It's 10 and a half seconds. He's picked up half a second. That won't do it in the remaining number of laps. Oh, no, he's got to get a lot quicker than that if he's going to close in on the, the one the Americans call Steady Eddie. And Lawson is on the gas too. And you can be sure that the Yamaha people are telling him exactly what that gap is so that if Gardner starts to threaten, Lawson has probably got something left and will be able to pull it out again. With less than five laps left in the event, the two major sponsors of the event, Yamaha and Honda, are still having a dogfight even though we've got probably seven minutes of racing all to go. On the TV screen, they're watching Gardner to see if that Rothman's Honda can... I got a bike off course up here at the top of the hill. Let me take it for a minute. It's by 25. Quick look tells me that that is Marco Gentile. Gentile is up, he is okay. He went back to his bike, he's fine. He just came in to turn six too high. And he just went for a little ride to the dirt, didn't even kiss a hay bale. But he's picking the bike up, he's checking it out. It ain't going any place, Marco. Just put it behind the hay bale. That bearing is all off. And it looks like he might even give it a shot at a push start, but I can't see it continuing on. He is done for the day, I believe. He's trying to call a turn worker over, but I can't see him going too much farther. Leaders by me and down to you, Bruce, and I'll tell you, Gardner has still got that nasty wiggle coming out of turn eight. Oh, yeah, that nasty wiggle, quite obvious on the uh, television monitors at our location. Lawson by us, boy. And that Yamaha of Eddie Lawson is just perfect sounding as it motors underneath us. At the stripe, looking back up there to see Wayne Gardner, the number one motorcycle. As according to my charts, and let me check this, we have completed now 36 laps and have four to go, John. 
He's picked up another quarter of a second. Gardner has, but I'm afraid that in the remaining number of laps, he won't be able to do it to Lawson. So we have the world champion Lawson of two years ago, who was ousted by Gardner last year in 1987. Lawson is making his effort at a comeback, and it's working. All right, let me take, and, uh, take a moment and do a rundown for those of you who are not running a chart on this event. Number three, Lawson leads it at 36 laps. Number one, Gardner is second. Number five, McKenzie third. Number 17, Rainey fourth. Number 34, Schwantz is in fifth. Number seven in the sixth place spot, Christian Soron, the Frenchman. Number four uh, in the sixth place spot, Ron Haslam from England on the Honda. Then number 12 in the next position, as D. De Rediguez, the Belgian rider. Then uh, number 10, and uh, wearing the number 10 is Rob McElnay. And then finally, rounding out the top 10 is rider number 18, another American, Baldwin from Connecticut. All right, you got something else you wanted to tell. Okay, yeah. I would like to take, put in a special thank you to Dunlop Tires, who have helped us make this whole weekend possible. And uh, with the competitive tires they have on the track, they're in the middle of what have been, what has been called here the tire wars. The tire wars currently between Michelin and Dunlop, the only two tires represented with the retirement of Raymond Roche's Kajima. Okay, we have got 36 laps into the books. 36 laps into the books. In fact, they just wrote the 37th one in as Lawson came by. Focus is on Gardner. Gardner signaling something to the pit men as he came down pit row, and it looks as though McKenzie is coming back up on Gardner now all of a sudden. We'll watch that one out on the smooth section, but Neil McKenzie is not letting Wayne Gardner get away. Lawson leads them through the smoothest section of this racetrack, and that uh, second place rider with about three laps left in this event, Wayne Gardner on the number one machine, still fighting an evil hand like one. Oh, yes, and it looks to me as if McKenzie is closing up on him again. Gardner did make that signal to his pit. We don't know what it was, but the probability is that he was indicating an incipient problem with the bike, probably handling. Perhaps the rubber is going away. This is a very tough course on rubber. Ralph, you got him? I got her leader by me already. I got Marco Gentile having a glass of water. He's going to get an umbrella out. He's done for the day. Here comes that battle between Gardner and McKenzie. I got McKenzie back by 1.04 seconds right now as they charge up through the throttle and the gears on the way up to the corkscrew. The leader by me now, I'm looking at the top of the hill as the number one machine of Wayne Gardner comes down at the top of the corkscrew and McKenzie has made up a bunch of ground on Gardner as Gardner now is going to encounter a little bit of traffic down in the uh, turn 10, turn 11 area. That could come into play in McKenzie's favor also. Just out underneath the Champion Spark Plug Bridge, for those of you spectators that are here, that's the battle for second that we were talking about, about ready to lap traffic. Meanwhile, the leader at the Nissan Strike completes lap number 38. 38 out of 40 laps are down now. And here's your battle for second. Tight together on the front chute. And they're going to be passing the traffic. Number 10, Rob McElnay. McElnay inside of the top 10, too, as that battle comes up on him. He's in the eighth place spot, I think it is. So second place will be lapping eight in just a few moments. In fact, we've got him in our gun sights as they are on that smooth portion of the racetrack right there. Number 10 is in front of Wayne Gardner, but McKenzie is uh, just off of the pace, maybe three bike lengths, and it is Gardner and McKenzie, the number one and number five motorcycles, enveloped in the battle for second. Meanwhile, the leader should be in front of Ralph. He is right coming up my way, and I'll tell you, the wind is picking up a little bit up here, and there is a little bit of a dusty haze between turns five and turn six. There's a big dusty exit zone between So McKenzie hot on it as they work themselves through the dust of the corkscrew. Awesome, smooth, controlled, and a beautiful piece of work as he goes down through the corkscrew. Gardner, a little bit rough, a little bit bumpy, with McKenzie right on his tail. McKenzie's bike handling better through this section of the racetrack, but still, Gardner able to stay barely in front of him. Let's keep our eyes on that second place battle. The second place battle right now, they'd be playing waltzing Matilda and throwing another shrimp on the Barbie, but there's a Scotsman ready to fire up the bagpipes from third. He wants to get back up into that higher points paying and higher money paying position. We should be, if this was an AMA race, we'd have seen a last lap flag. We are effectively on the last lap of this event. This is the battle for second, and it is Gardner still over McKenzie. They are on the final lap, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the money lap. You can't keep your act together here. You're in serious difficulties. McKenzie, maybe three bike lengths back of Gardner. Lawson's got it in cruise control right now. And Eddie Lawson still on the very smooth asphalt.
Well, Ralph Shaheen, you're going to get him coming by in anger one more time, but this is the last lap under competition, and he should be pointing his front number plate right at you. Can you imagine the things going through Eddie Lawson's mind at this time? He has dreamed of this of a lifetime, winning the USGB. It's right. It's a few turns away. Here comes that battle for second place. Gardner has been battling that bike all day, and McKenzie is right on him. cheering the hillsides are going nuts and i got a great battle yet for second place this is the checkered flag this is the checkered flag lap. and ladies and gentlemen may i introduce mr eddie lawson the winner of the united states grand prix at the here comes that second place battle to the line now second place to the line will be wayne gardner from australia to finish in second neil mckenzie from scotland to catch third oh uh, oh uh, and look at these hillsides waving back at eddie lawson with his arm in the air right now, cruising, and every corner worker, every spectator that's got a sideline with him here, waving at him. Here's our fourth place, fourth place, and still very much in the world championship hunt. Number 34, Kevin Schwantz on the Pepsi Cola sponsored Suzuki. And let me look back and see. Fifth place should go. Oh, check that, that was fifth. Let me start all over, in fact, to make sure I get this right. Number three, Lawson wins it. Number one, Gardner is second. Number five in the third place spot is McKenzie. Seven, Team Ramey was fourth. 34, Schwantz was fifth. I'm guessing it's going to be number seven, Cerrone for sixth. And then uh, we'll get the rest of it to you in just a minute. I'm trying to take a little break. Uh, Ralph Shaheed, over in the corner. Your impressions of your first ever United States Grand Prix. My first ever, and hopefully my last or not my last time, I was just what I was trying to think. I'm just so excited to see Eddie Lawson get this victory in the USGP. Here they come, the wheelies, the hands up in the air, the fans going crazy. Gardner and Lawson side by side as they come up into the hill section. What a wonderful race. Everybody giving the yells to Eddie Lawson. You know he's got to be the happiest man on the earth next to Jimmy Police. Larry Coleman, they're about to get to your position. These guys are working the crowd, it seems like to me. And the corner workers are going nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, in turn eight in the corkscrew at Laguna Seca, may I present to you the best in the world, Wayne Gardner, number one, Rob McKenzie, Eddie Lawson, our winner, along with his teammate, Dave Gaze. Let's hear it for these guys. They are the best. Eddie Lawson slowing down, pulling off to the side of the racetrack and waving at the crowd. They love him. Eddie Lawson. The world's best look at this, guys. He 